The respect for fundamentals and constant practice. I notice you have a great respect for that, you know, with paintings that you've done just outside of your uh, DreamWorks uh, office, where it's like, I don't even know, it looked like hundreds of paintings when you showed me. I want to ask you if you can speak about the importance of both fundamentals and constant practice, especially at your level where you're already a professional for years and years and years. Well, you know, uh, all the uh, all, all the up and uh, up and comers have have so many resources, and they're so good, and you know, they uh, they they're able to learn so much so fast. You know, they come nipping at our heels, and uh, uh, I I got to keep on top of my game. You know, uh, always. But I'm I'm happy about that. Um, you know, we we need our exterior motivations, and and that's one of them. So, uh, you know, these. These young artists coming up are, are really amazing, and so I've got to make sure I'm at the top of my game as well now more than ever. But this question is it, it, it's a perfect question because it is everything I can uh, I, I can thank every opportunity that I've ever had for exactly what you started with. You know, I'm uh, I'm an average guy. Um, the uh, maybe the only thing I can the only thing I'm willing to say for myself is that I've wanted this very badly. Uh, I haven't been able to think of doing anything else rather than keeping on top of this. And so I've been so interested in developing as an artist that uh, that's the thing that's created the opportunity. So when I got, uh, when, I, when I finished studying and I finished college and it was time to work, I knew I was not nearly good enough. I knew I had so much more to learn. And so even though I, I had an art job, before I was in animation, I worked uh, for a couple of years in theme park show design. It was a hard job. It was a grueling job. I was in a big learning curve. I'd come home exhausted. But um, my work wasn't good enough, and I was hoping for bigger and better. So even if it was just a one hour study, a half hour study, a 20 minute study, uh, I would do it every single night before I went to bed. And sometimes I was so tired, I had a little trick. Uh, I, I couldn't think clearly, I was too tired, you know, but I felt like I've got to keep this habit alive. If I let it go one night, I might let it go two nights and then the dream might just kind of evaporate. So I had this little trick, this is traditional media back in those days in the early 90s. I would just, I had my palette at home, I would just pick three random colors plus white, and I would try and just mix them around and put them on a, put them on a canvas, you know, just a little square. I'd try and put those colors together in an interesting way, just side by side and see what felt good and what didn't. And I'd spend 10 minutes doing that and then go to bed, something. Well, when the opportunity came to show my portfolio at DreamWorks, I had a lot of paintings, I had some of my concept theme parks, some imaginative artwork, and I also had a whole bunch of studies and a whole bunch of roughs. Well, the artists, the established artists at DreamWorks, they knew all about color keys and about doing roughs and getting a comp done. They call them color keys in, in animation, roughing out what a scene looks like. And I had a whole bunch of these sketches as part of my portfolio, kind of pick the best ones. And this is one of the things that got me in the door. Had I shirked, had I let that, had I let myself say, I'm too tired, I already have an art job, it's good enough, would have never gotten in the door at DreamWorks. I wouldn't have, from there, you know, from DreamWorks, I've had the opportunities at, um, at Disney and, and other studio studios I hope someday I could work for, would have never happened. Bobby. And I want to keep going with that because the other side and the thing you mentioned is the traditionally based skills, you know, skills that apply if you're working with paint, if you're drawing, if you're working digitally, if you're modeling in Maya, any visual art, the foundational skills.
So there's a story I tell in my schoolism classes uh, that, that I think might be appropriate here because things were going great at DreamWorks, but I love drawing. I love drawing portraits and painting landscapes. And so I asked DreamWorks if I could take a six month sabbatical and uh, I, to work on my personal work. And I was able to work it out. It was great because I had a contract to come back to DreamWorks. I had a job waiting for me and I had saved up money so I could do this. And for six months I went unpaid. And what I did was I went to a local art school and I said, hey, you know, I'm a DreamWorks artist. Wonder if I could teach a class on animation art in exchange for sitting in on your figurative and your life drawing and your painting classes and uninstructed workshops. Well, this was a small atelier. They were enthusiastic about that. They felt like having a DreamWorks artist on staff, you know, look good. They have to market. And so they were very agreeable. And I did this for six months. And Bobby, I was I was a fanatic. Um, uh, every day uh, I would I would show up at nine o'clock every day and I'd stay till 10 o'clock at night. We took long breaks. We took lunch and then we took dinner. We'd finish class at four o'clock take a break till seven o'clock and then paint again from seven to 10 PM. And then I do landscape painting over the weekend, uh, hardcore about this. And so that's where my teaching career began. So here I have this DreamWorks career. And then I'm also, I'm, I'm going back to DreamWorks, working full time in animation, but teaching a class once a week in an evening or a weekend. So at that point, I get a very interesting phone call. The phone call is from Disney, and it's someone at Disney who, who had heard of my reputation as a life drawing teacher. And they said, hey, you know, we, we know you're an animation artist, and I think you're probably still working at DreamWorks, but we're looking for someone who can teach a once-a-week class to our artists, uh, a life drawing, life painting type of a class. Well, there was no conflict of interest there. I wasn't going to teach Disney about what we were doing over at DreamWorks. And so... One thing people might not know about the DreamWorks campus is one of Disney's main campuses is literally across the street from DreamWorks, right across the street. And so that's where my class was going to be. And so I had this amazing opportunity where I'd finish my work at DreamWorks. I'd walk across the street. I had my key card and I actually have a stack. I keep all the key cards I've ever had at all the studios. So I actually have them over here on my bookshelf. Let me find a DreamWorks and the Disney one. So in, uh, uh, in, in one hand, I had my DreamWorks key card, let me into DreamWorks anytime, day or night. And in my other hand, I've got my Disney key card, let me into Disney anytime, day or night. And when I was studying, I hoped someday that a studio might be interested in what I did. And all of a sudden, I was carrying these, and I could not believe it. DreamWorks, Disney, all access pass. And so I teach my class, and then I, you know, it would be 10 o'clock at night. I'd go through, you know, they have free snacks in the kitchen. I'd go through the free snacks over at, at Disney, you know, get a snack after a long day. But if DreamWorks or if Disney didn't have good snacks, I'd grab my, uh, my DreamWorks key card, walk back across the street, let myself into DreamWorks 10.30 at night and go through their snacks. And if you have to know who had the better snacks, uh, sorry, Disney, it was, it was DreamWorks. And so uh, your question uh, it has an obvious conclusion. When you do that extra effort to develop foundational skills and the daily in and out study, doors will open for you. In my case, uh, the door that opened to me was to a kitchen full of free snacks, and it was absolutely fantastic. I think it's kind of, it's kind of accurate to say that practice, really caring about the fundamentals, will open doors to life's snacks, you know, wherever, wherever you go, as long as you keep serious and keep dedicated so thank you very much for that uh your sure. thoughts and your story one other, yeah. thanks bob can i throw in one other thing about it absolutely because my 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 wife cracked a joke that was very complimentary of schoolism but but not so uh complimentary to me maybe um you know my the teaching led to the opportunity for me to teach with you and at schoolism which 
teaching online, uh, we have students from like everywhere in the world right now. I have a student from Slovenia. I have a student from, you know, these exotic places from all over the world, people I would never meet. And uh, uh, so that's another opportunity that's, that's been really fantastic for me as a teacher. So my wife said, you know, uh, with the, all the online teaching you've been doing and the Schoolism Live events where you, you have got to travel to these some other cities, she said, you could find yourself in jail in any major city in the world. And chances are you had a student from there. You have someone you can call. You know, you can say, hey, you know, um, <laughs> I remember me. I'm in jail. Uh, uh, I know you live in this town. Maybe you can come help me. But, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the glory of it is... Uh, meeting all these people from all these places from all over the world and all of a sudden it's a small and exciting universe awesome right on well thank you very much for your time nathan and your thoughts and if you are interested in art you the listener i'm talking to you nathan is one of our best teachers on schoolism he has a bunch of really wonderful, very popular classes, designing environments, composition, designing with light and color, uh, landscape sketching with gouache and watercolor. And as of this video, who knows what else? So definitely check out his courses and level up and get your, your level of understanding of the fundamentals to a professional level. Hey everybody, Bobby Chu here. So I get a lot of questions about art and life as an artist. How do you get a really good career? How do I become a really great artist? Well, I actually have an answer. And it's a simple one. Get an annual Schoolism subscription and do the lessons. Take the classes. Because this way, whether you're a student or you're a professional, you can learn from the comfort of your own home and do everything at your own pace. With an annual Schoolism subscription, it's just a one-time payment to access all 26 courses. And right now is a great time to get it because of the winter sale. We only have a sale once or twice a year on Schoolism. And this one is a great one. You save $100 off an annual Schoolism subscription. How do you become a successful person? Surround yourself with very successful people. The people at Schoolism are artists that have been nominated for Oscars, won Emmys, awarded Master Awards, painted for Time Magazine, Rolling Stone, worked at Disney, DreamWorks, art directed at Pixar, you name it, taught gesture drawing classes at Pixar, designed creatures for Star Wars, directing movies. I love winter because it's a season of giving, and giving knowledge to better someone's career or our own is one of the best gifts we can give or receive. So get a Schoolism subscription now before the sale ends January 10th, 2019. Go to schoolism.com and enroll today.